I apologize. If I did, I wouldn't answer. I'm busy. You know I, how polls are done? I, I, oh, I'm going to get myself please. in trouble. But So I really don't believe too much in them. So, well, 2016 taught a lot of people about the ineffective Well, they were very ineffective because yeah. I thought I was doing well. I'd go to a place and I'd have 30,000, 40,000 people. Hillary would go, they have 500 people, and they tell me I'm going to lose. I said, why am I going to lose? I had 40,000 people. She had 200 people. But, you know, I have a theory. These pollsters, they charge you a lot of money, too. You know, they charge you half a million bucks to do some stupid poll, and they interview like 251 people. I don't think they interview them in many cases. I don't want to get myself in too much trouble. You think it's bullshit? No, I think they sit there, they make a deal, they get a half a million bucks, and they say, <laughs> Trump's leading 51 to 49, they announce it, and everybody says, oh, oh. do you understand? I, yeah. really don't, I, so don't, I don't think a... they, I think in a lot, look, I'm a very common sense person. I think that they probably don't always poll. Some of them probably never poll. Uh, what's the difference between 49 to 51 and 47 and a half to, well, it's also a tiny percentage of the population. I don't think it's representative of the overall population. I just don't think I don't it know is. of one person in my whole life that ever got called by a pulse. Exactly. That's my point. So then we are just three days away from the greatest political victory in the history of our country, I guess, in the history of the world. But it only happens if you vote. If you don't vote, then bad things could be happened. You'll be very depressed. And we don't want to have depression, right? There's no depression. You know the best way to stop depression? Work your ass off. Work your ass off. You don't have time. You want to work so hard that you don't have time for depression. But I didn't come here looking for your money. I don't need your money. I don't want your money. All I want you to do is get out and vote. Get out and vote. Tuesday. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the latest obvious psyop from the mainstream liberal media that is clearly being put out here in order to fire up a Democrat Party base that has not seen the early voting turnout that they need in order to win. OK, that's what's happening here. OK, the Democrat Party is depressed. Kamala Harris, as a candidate, she's not actually really motivating people to go out and vote. She's not Obama. She's not even Biden. She's not Hillary. Okay, that's the honest to God truth. She's not. Okay, but Democrats right now, they are in desperate need of hopium. And that's exactly what they got here with this clearly, clearly rigged poll from Ann Seltzer for the Des Moines Register showing Harris up plus three over Trump in Iowa. We want to protect the women of our country. The Des Moines Register Iowa poll shows that women are turning away from Trump and leading Harris's surge in the state. Independent women are breaking late for Harris, giving her a 28 point advantage with them over Trump. And women 65 and older, they favor Harris by 35%. Independents overall supported Trump the past two presidential elections in Iowa, but this poll shows them picking Harris instead by 7%. Harris is also better with her own party. 97% of Democrats support her, while 89% of Republicans support Trump. We close with two other quick points. If this surge is real, it could help Democrats in the close first and third congressional districts, plus the neck and neck battles in some of those state house legislative districts. And it could also show Republicans, independents, and other undecideds that Harris could win. So that could also then bring more support her way. However, this is just one poll. And as Iowa's former governor, Terry Branstead famously said, the only poll that really matters is the one on election day. In Des Moines, I'm Dave Price. Yeah, that is true. The only polls that actually matter are the polls on election day. But Democrats, the mainstream liberal media, uh, they are taking this poll and they are using it to inject hopium into Kamala's campaign. Okay, and the reason why is because this poll, uh, at least historically speaking, has been pretty accurate. Okay, and when they drop a bombshell poll like this, showing Kamala winning, which again, I think is highly, highly, highly unlikely considering how Trump won that state in 2016 and in 2020 uh, pretty easily, okay? And also on top of that, the same day, Emerson College, which is also 
a decent poll uh, showed Trump up by 10, which is far more in line with what we've seen in regards to Trump's performance in Iowa, which, again, it's funny how they're not talking about this poll right here that, again, is more in line with history, okay, and much more likely to be the real result. Okay, both of these can't be true at the same time. Right? Somebody is really, really, really wrong, okay? And if I was a bet man, okay, I probably would bet that the Seltzer poll is wrong okay that the poll having Kamala Harris up is incorrect okay because if that poll was true if Kamala Harris is actually up three in Iowa then the race is over right that would indicate that not only would she win all of the swing states in a blowout really uh she would also flip states like Florida blue as well and I just don't think that's gonna happen right I do not think that is going to happen I just don't see it Kamala is not that strong okay those would be Obama type numbers she's not Obama but again that doesn't keep the Democrat Party propagandists okay from injecting this hopium into their veins uh and making them believe that hey Kamala Harris has a chance to landslide Trump, which is exactly the point of this poll being put out there. It doesn't matter uh, if the pollster is essentially ruining her credibility. She doesn't care. Okay. Because again, everybody wants to stop Trump. Without a doubt, a very comfortable, a very comfortable victory for Kamala is on the table. Initially, I was thinking we're not going to know the results of the election for like at least a week. Now it is certainly on the table. It is very likely we know it that night if the margins are, you know, that strong. So plus three, wow. Nobody could have seen this strong of a result for Kamala coming out of Iowa. And again, that is for the, the other states, they gotta be in panic mode right now, bro. Cause a poll like this means it now, without a doubt, a very comfortable, a very comfortable victory for Kamala is on the table. Initially I was thinking, we're not gonna know the results of the election for like at least a week. Now, it is certainly on the table. It is very likely we know it that night if the margins are, you know, that strong. So, plus three, Kamala. In Iowa, bro, Hillary lost Iowa. Biden lost Iowa. Obama was the last Democrat to win Iowa. Again, gold standard poll. But if the Seltzer poll is accurate, then this would signify an 11-point swing to the left. In an environment where Kamala Harris is swinging 11 points to the left in Iowa, it is not illogical to presume that she's looking quite good in the actual battleground states nearby, like Wisconsin and Michigan, for example, and that something bigger is happening across the country. Do not let this make you complacent. Let it fire you up. Let it inspire you. Let it light a fire under your asses to make this thing a reality. You don't win elections with polls polls, you win them with votes. So remember the feeling that you have right now hearing the news about this poll. You know what will make it feel even better? Having that news become a reality. The poll showed us that that is within reach. And that is the point, right? That is the point of the poll, okay? The point of the poll is not to actually show where the race is at in Iowa because, again, we know that if Democrats thought that the race was close in Iowa, if that poll was actually accurate, Kamala Harris would be campaigning there, right? She would be spending resources there. She's not, okay? And the Trump campaign would be there as well, too. The fact that both campaigns are not there, okay, tells you everything you need to know about whether or not that poll is accurate. That poll is, is, is not accurate, okay? And the pollster is essentially throwing away her reputation in order to fire up the Democrat Party base. That is my honest-to-God opinion because the turnout for Democrats, especially in some of these key swing states like North Carolina and Georgia, when you look at, for example, black voters, which is a key voting block for Democrats, is down. It's down, okay? I, I find it hard to believe that Trump is going to lose Georgia and North Carolina at this point, okay? Um, in Arizona, in Nevada, especially in Nevada, she's not getting the numbers that she needs to get in, in regards to early voting. Even when you look at some metrics, like, for example, the gender gap, in regards to women voting, right? And that's what the media wants to make a big deal about is how much women have coming out in voting, right? In this election, it's still down from 2020. Democrats are performing worse across the board compared to how they were performing in 2020. I cannot think of one stat in which Democrats are performing better in 2024 than they were in 2020. Turnout is down across the board for Democrats, GOP, turnout is up in early voting also GOP registrations are the highest they've ever been okay so there are more Republicans in this country than ever 
uh, yeah, again, this is what you do when the writing's on the wall, right? Going into the election, when you can see that, oh, wait, wait, Democrats aren't performing that well. Let's throw out this bombshell poll uh, showing that, hey, Kamala Harris, she has so much momentum that she could win Iowa, right? Well, what does that do? What that does is that that provides the Democrats with everything that they really need right now. What Democrats need more than anything is hope, right? That's what they need because Democrats have been so depressed they need hope. I mean, if you think about it, her whole candidacy is just a long shot because we already knocked Biden out of the race. Throwing Kamala in there was, again, like a Hail Mary, okay? I mean, everybody knows she wasn't that great, but they threw her in there because, okay, well, maybe she's better than Biden. The whole campaign is based off hope. That's what they need. And that's what this poll provides for them. That's the whole point of the poll is to provide them with hope. Also, the other point of the poll is to try to suppress Trump voters, okay? You got to understand, there's a psychological game being played here from the media. This is why all of a sudden you're starting to see these polls in the betting markets shift back in Kamala Harris's favor because they're trying to affect the psychology of voters. They want to give Democrats hope and they want to suppress Trump supporters. They want to make Trump supporters think that, oh, well, they're going to rig it in favor of Kamala Harris anyway, so I might as well not vote, right? That is what they want. It's a psychological game. Do not fall for it. OK, for the most part, a vast majority of the polls coming out in the next couple of days or so are bunk. OK, it's bunk. It's, it's, it's just there to essentially try to help Kamala Harris and to make it seem like she is in a better position than she is. That doesn't mean that she can't win. It just means that there's no realistic world in which Kamala Harris is winning Iowa. OK, she's her path to victory is not coming through there. Right. That's what I'm saying. So that being said, the poll that they should be talking about that I think is actually a much bigger deal than the Iowa poll because this pollster has a track record of being uh, very accurate. Uh, in fact, Atlas Intel was the most accurate pollster of 2020 and also of 2022 shows Trump with a stunning lead in all of the swing states, right? Across the board, okay? He's up 3.4 in North Carolina, 2.5 in Georgia, 6.5 in Arizona, 5.5 in Arizona, Wisconsin, uh, one point, Michigan, 1.5, 1 1.8 1 in Pennsylvania, plus being up two points nationally. Now, again, this is Atlas Intel, the most accurate pollster of 2020 and 2022. Notice how the left, they're completely ignoring this one, right? In fact, you have some people like Cenk Uger, who claims he knows what he's talking about, basically saying that Atlas Intel is a right-leaning poll that is inaccurate so uh but these polls constantly lean trump and they don't necessarily in the, uh, they have not been very accurate but no, nevertheless i'm going to share all of it with you guys atlantis intel has uh trump winning uh arizona easily north carolina easily nevada easily etc and has trump winning overall uh 312 to 226 in fact they have them winning all of the swing states uh so Another one that's not very reliable is uh, Trafalgar Insider that's also leans Republican and inaccurately so uh, in the past. Doesn't mean they were inaccurate this time. 306, 232 Trump. Uh, they have them winning um, all the swing states except Nevada, which is surprising because there was bad numbers coming out of Nevada in early voting for Kamala Harris. So as I keep telling you guys, they all of these like – She's got bad numbers in Nevada and North Carolina, seemingly in early voting. But then you're getting these uh, latest polls outside of the two I just read you uh, leading heavily Kamala Harris. Yeah. So you have Chank calling the most accurate poll of 2020 an inaccurate poll, right? A bunk poll just because it's showing Trump winning. But he's putting stock in some of these other polls that are showing Kamala Harris winning, despite the fact that he admits that the early voting numbers for Kamala in key states like North Carolina and Georgia and Nevada don't look good, right? But he's putting more stock in those polls, right? Those polls that, in my opinion, are much more likely to be rigged than this poll. And the reason why I say that is because even the New York Times, who also released a poll showing slightly better numbers for Kamala Harris, they actually came out and admitted the quiet part out loud about these polls and how hard it is to poll Trump supporters. In fact, they're basically warning that we're probably going to make the same mistake that we made back in 2016 and 2020, which is underestimating Trump's 
support, right, due to non-response bias. Let's read this. Four years ago, the polls were thought to underestimate Mr. Trump because of non-response bias in which his supporters were less likely to take surveys than demographically similar Biden supporters. It's hard to measure non-response bias. After all, we couldn't reach these demographically similar voters. But one measure I track from time to time is the portion of Democrats or Republicans who respond to a survey after considering other factors. Across these final polls, white Democrats were 16% likelier to respond than white Republicans. That's a larger disparity than our earlier polls this year, and it's not much better than our final polls in 2020. Even with the pandemic over, it raises the possibility that the polls could underestimate Mr. Trump yet again. We do a lot to account for this, but in the end, there are no guarantees. Yeah, so basically what they're saying is that they have a hard time polling Trump supporters. So the same thing that was happening in 2016 and 2020 that led a lot of these liberal polls, okay, that were showing Biden up by a ridiculous amount and Clinton up by a ridiculous amount, these polls were wrong. So they're essentially guessing as to how much support Trump actually has, right? They, they really don't know, okay? So they have no clue how well Trump is doing at all because they can't reach Trump supporters. And again, are some of these polls trying to account for that? Sure, right? But again, they're already admitting that, yeah, what happened in 2016 and 2020 likely is what's going to happen again in 2024 in a sense that Trump is going to overperform the polls. And right now, Trump is beating Kamala Harris in the polls, okay? The only swing states that Trump is losing or there's basically a tie-in right now is Wisconsin, which the only reason Trump is uh, slightly behind, I think he's like 0.1 percentage points behind, is because of some outlier CNN poll showing Kamala up six or something like that, um, and Michigan, right? But when it comes to all the other swing states, including Pennsylvania, the big one, uh, Trump is up, right? So if history repeats itself a third time, then Trump is on pace to win in a landslide. And that's not to say that to get cocky. That's to say, go out and to vote, right? To make it a reality, okay? Because again, Democrats want you to think, what they want you to think is that, Hey, Kamala Harris has the momentum and you might as well not vote because Trump can't win anyways, right? He is not possible for him to win. Therefore, don't vote. That is what they want Trump supporters to think. They want Trump supporters to think that Kamala Harris is going to win a state like Iowa, okay, in order to uh, suppress turnout. That's what they want. But the reality is that Trump's support, even in these polls, is being underestimated and likely Kamala's support is being overestimated and Trump is still winning, right? In these polls in which his support is underestimated, which should be motivating people to make that a reality. Make it a reality that Trump wins on a landslide because it is within reach. I'm telling you. I'm telling you guys, right? And the media is desperate to make you think the exact opposite. There's a psychological game being played right now on the American people, and that is what you're seeing in the betting markets. That is what you're seeing with these rigged polls coming out, basically showing Kamala Harris gaining momentum. She has done nothing in the past week to gain any momentum whatsoever. This is their last ditch effort to manufacture a reality that they want to see. So that is what's happening. Don't fall for the nonsense. Go out and vote like never before. We can landslide Kamala Harris. We can humiliate Kamala Harris. That is the reality, okay? We are in that territory, and you know that because, again, they're releasing these types of desperate polls to motivate Democrats because they need it. Turnout is down for Democrats, okay? And they're trying to trick Trump supporters into thinking that Trump can't win because Kamala Harris has the momentum. She's winning by so much that, hey, she might flip Iowa, right? Which, again, would demotivate people to vote and that's what they want and we can't allow them to do it what this actually really means is that hey trump is probably winning by more than uh what you're seeing in the polls and what they're willing to admit and this is why we need to go out and vote even more to make it a reality okay we can landslide kamala harris we can totally humiliate her that is within the realm of possibility and all we have to do is just sprint through the finish line so let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace